very very good afternoon to one and all this is dr nabil ahmed with you and today we are going to discuss a topic on the benefits given by the singapore government due to the covid-19 impact in singapore and this is a part two that we speak about in the first part we spoke about the stabilization package which the government had provided to the citizens as well as the companies today we will be looking more into the care and support package the enhanced care and support package is to provide assurance and support to singapore household during this period of uncertainty and there are four different types of packages that has been coming under the care and support packet the first one is a care 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 and support cash there's a cash payout of 900 600 or 300 dollars for all singaporeans aged 21 and above in 2020 and parents with at least one singaporean child aged 20 and below in 2020 will each get an additional 300 singapore dollars the passion card which is generally used for various purchases in singapore there will be a top up given there for 100 singapore dollars paid in cash for all singaporeans aged 15 and above in 2020 no need for physical redemption and this will now be paid together with the care and support cash payout in consideration of the need for physical distancing due to covid-19 and these two support packages are available between august to september 2020 the workfare special payment a flat payment of 3000 singapore dollars for all employees and self employed person aged 35 and above in 2019 who received workfare income supplement payments in the year work year 2019 will also get this payment the workfare special payment will be given cash or two equated payments of 1500 each in 2020 which was one given in july and the next one due in october 2020 grocery vouchers of 300 singapore dollars in 2020 and 100 in 2021 which will be dispersed in the quarter 4 of 2020 for all singaporeans aged 21 and above who live in one room and two room hdb the housing development board flats and do not own more than one property and a gst you save voucher all eligible hdbs that is the housing development board households will receive a you save in financial year 2020 and eligible households with five or more members will receive an additional gst voucher for a rebate in 2020 and will thus receive a total of 2.5 times the regular gst you say voucher and this will be spread between april to january 2021 service and conservancy charges which is the snscc rebate eligible singapore household living in hdb will receive rebates to offset between 1.5 and 3.5 months of sncc over financial year 2020 and grants to self help groups and community development council a 20 million singapore dollar grant to self help groups over financial year 2020 2021 has been given it's all discretionary based on the approvals and 75 million grant to cbcs community development council in the financial year 2020 has been given these grants will help to scale up local assistance schemes to support vulnerable households taken care by the ministers in the different localities the mass and the financial industry support measures this is the most uh, important measures for corporates uh, functioning in singapore the support measures in terms of uh, individuals from deferment of loan repayment for residential property loan renovation and student loan new mortgage equity withdrawal loans granted after april 6 2020 borrowers can choose to either defer the principal repayment or both principal interest up to december 31 2020 interest will accrue only on deferred principal amount that is interest on interest is of course waived until december 31 after the deferment period the loan amount together with with the interest accrued on the deferred principal amount will be fully amortized over the remaining loan tenure There is no balloon repayment. That is whatever is missed missed installments. They are not going to be doubled up in the upcoming year. But the the normal schedule will continue after first January of 2021. The deferment will not cause the loan to be reflected as a restructured loan in the borrower's credit bureau report. In terms of commercial and industry property loans, borrowers can choose to defer repayment of principal or both principal and interest up to 31 December 2020. and the deferment will not cause a loan to be reflected again in the credit bureau as a negative remark for deferment motor vehicle loans and high purchase agreements borrowers can again approach their banks and respective financial companies to discuss suitable repayment plans it would be subject to case by case assessment and on the satisfaction approval the again the loan will be extended the deferment will not cause a loan to be reflected as a restructured loan in the credit bureau report again because the credit bureau report is the most important document and any restructure of loan is going to have a point based uh, reduction in the credit bureau which will impact the future uh, loan uh, or credibility of the 
customer. So this disbursement or let's say the deferment is not going to impact in the credit bureau report. So extend repayment of debt consolidation plans. Borrowers who are on DCP can apply for an extension of loan tenure of their existing DCP or up to five years anytime from May 18 to December 31st, 2020. The extension of the loan tenure will not again cause any reflection on the credit bureau report in an adverse manner. Defer insurance premium repayments and flexible premium installment plans. So various policy holders can apply to their insurer to defer the premium payments for up to six months while maintaining the insurance coverage during this period, which is very, very significant. And uh, premium deferment is available for individual, life, and long-term health insurance policies with a premium due date or policy renewal between April 1st to 30th of September 2020. Policy holders can apply to their insurer for installment repayment plans while maintaining insurance production for the period of the year. Waiver of all fall payout back account service fees and failed Cairo deduction charges. Individuals who are not able to meet the relevant minimum average daily or monthly balances for the retail bank accounts can apply to have fall below services fees waived up until 31st of December 2020. Individuals who have set up gyro arrangements for automatic reduction of payments, example insurance premiums, electricity bill, phone bill payment from your retail bank accounts can apply to have bank fees or any failed deduction waived up to 31st of December 2020. Now coming to easier refinancing or repricing of investment property loans, borrowers with investment property loans that are out of the lock-in period can apply to refinance or reprice their loans without being subject to the total debt servicing ratio and mortgage servicing ratio under the mass property loan rules up to 31st of December 2020. Consequently, borrowers who do not meet the uh, total debt servicing ratio or mortgage servicing ratio will not need to commit to a debt repayment plan to repay 3% of the outstanding loan over the 3 years period. Borrowers can also rely on this exemption to refinance or reprice their loans to lower their monthly repayments. Any subsequent application of to defer property loan payments will be asset loss on a case-by-case basis. If the loan is still within the lock-in period, contractual penalties may apply depending on what's mentioned in the loan agreement. Lower interest on personal unsecured credit. Individuals with unsecured credit facility from bank and other credit card issuers may apply to their respective lender to convert their outstanding balances to term loans at a reduced rate of interest cap rate percent. The term of the converted loan can be up to five years depending on the individual's ability to meet the minimum monthly repayment. And this option is available to all individuals who suffer a loss of 25% or more of their monthly income after February 1st, 2020 and are at a risk of incurring substantial arrears. So individuals may apply to their lenders for conversion of their outstanding unsecured debt from April 6th till December 2020. So we can see that many plans have been put in place due to the forward impact to households to support them to overcome their liability burdens on a monthly basis, having lost jobs or having reduction in pay for the household. They have multiple options to restructure their financing options at the same time not impacting their credit bureau report. This is a very, very good sign. There are some support measures for SMEs as well. Again, for deferring payment on principal or SME secured term loans, so borrower can choose to defer the payment of the principal and pay only with the interest up to 31st December. Borrowers can choose to extend the loan tenure by up to the corresponding principal deferments period. Opt-in basis for borrowers whose loan repayments are not more than 90 days past due as of April 6, 2020. Lower interest on SME loans, mass to lend at an interest rate of 0.1% per annum for two years tenure, to eligible financial institutions under the mass SDP facility for ESD loans to support their lending to SMEs. It applies to banks and financial companies participating in Enterprise Singapore's EHS SME Working Capital Loan and Temporary, temporary Bridging Loan Program. There are flexible premium installment loans, so policy holders can apply to their insurer for installment payment plans while maintaining insurance production for the period period, just like how we saw for the individuals. The COVID-19 Act was passed in 2020, called as the COVID-19 Temporary Measures Act 2020. Let's have a look at it. So the inability to perform contracts due to COVID-19, which the Act aims to provide temporary relief from legal action for up to six months after the Act commences on April 2020. 
and the act applies only to those contractual obligations to be performed on or after February 1st, 2020. But it's not about for those who have entered into the contract after 25th of March and that the inability due to a material exchange caused by the COVID-19 issues. So lease or licenses for commercial or industrial property, uh, construction contracts, event contracts, high purchase agreement, loan facilities and tourism related contracts. So these contracts are covered and any inability as per the contract if there is any penalty terms is not going to apply uh, for a period of six months. And there is a higher threshold for bankruptcy and insolvency proceedings and uh, we look into the differences. So earlier for the debt quantum which is involving $15,000 they can go in for a bankruptcy and insolvency proceedings which is now amended to $60,000. And period for a debtor to satisfy a creditor's statutory demand, which was 21 days, has been amended to six months. And unsuitability for debt prepayment scheme from 100,000 Singapore dollars to 200,000 dollars, and a debt quantum there from 10,000 to 100,000 dollars. And winding up application for companies for those applications after 7th of April 2020. Earlier it was three weeks, and now it's six months. For conduct of meetings, when personal attendance at any meeting is required by law or legal requirements, such as an annual general meeting, board of director meeting, etc., and alternative arrangements such as electronic copy, video conferencing, teleconferencing, and other electronic means will be accepted till such time this temporary measure is lifted. So thank you so much for uh, viewing this video. I look forward to meeting you all in another interesting presentation soon. Thank you and have a nice day. Stay safe.